Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Serving as the backbone of American aerial refueling operations since the Cold War, the KC-135 has been a silent force multiplier, allowing fighters, bombers, and transport aircraft to fly farther, longer, and faster than ever before. The KC-135 was developed in the 1950s by Boeing, originally based on the airframe of the Dash 80 prototype that would eventually evolve into the Boeing 707. Officially entering service in 1957, the KC-135 was the U.S. Air Force's first jet-powered refueling aircraft. Equipped with a flying boom for high-speed refueling and hose and drogue systems for flexibility, the aircraft can offload over 200,000 pounds of fuel in a single mission. In high-alert scenarios, time is critical. That's where the KC-130 scramble and minimum interval takeoff, also known as MITO, comes into play. During the Cold War, tanker and bomber crews practiced rapid response, scrambles to launch aircraft within minutes of a nuclear warning. This meant getting airborne in extremely short intervals to avoid being destroyed on the ground during a first strike. In a MITO launch, multiple KC-135s take off in quick succession. separated by as little as 12 to 15 seconds. The runway becomes a staggered stream of jet wash, heat distortion, and roaring engines. The procedure is intense and dangerous. Jet blast from the lead aircraft can destabilize the next tanker as it begins its roll. Pilots and crews must maintain tight discipline and perfect timing to avoid catastrophic accidents. The primary mission of the KC-135 remains aerial refueling. Refueling is conducted at altitudes ranging from 15,000 to 35,000 feet, depending on the mission. The boom operator, located in the aircraft's rear underbelly, lies prone facing aft and guides the refueling boom into the receiving aircraft's receptacle using a joystick and a set of mirrors or camera feeds. Communication between the boom operator and receiver pilot is constant and both must maintain stable flight to prevent damage during the transfer. The whole job of aerial refueling kind of is the backbone of a lot of operations. Um, you, you can only get a jet so far without having to constantly land it and refuel it. So we help extend that range of airframes. It's long cargo flights that need refueling without stopping and wasting hours on the ground. To me, the best part of the job, oh God, the views. I mean, you get up there in the sky and you open that siding window and you just see snow peak mountains or the coastline, you know, you see those receivers making some awesome maneuver coming in behind you to rendezvous on you and it, it just gets that heart racing. The KC-135's boom can offload fuel at rates of up to 1,000 gallons per minute. 
One of the most strategic aerial refueling missions the KC-135 performs is supporting the B-2 Spirit Bomber. With its distinctive flying wing design and radar-absorbing materials, the B-2 is designed to penetrate heavily defended airspace undetected. But its real strength lies in its global reach. And for that, it depends heavily on mid-air refueling. Good, still hanging out at uh, 15 feet. And about 30 degrees. Come here. The KC-135 plays a vital role in enabling the B-2 to perform global strike missions without relying on foreign basing. For example, B-2s stationed at Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri have flown nonstop missions to the Middle East and back. With several aerial refuelings conducted en route, During these missions, the KC-135 must carefully match the B-2's altitude and airspeed, while avoiding turbulence that could disrupt the stealth aircraft's finely tuned systems. Due to the B-2's stealth coating and sensitive structure, boom operators are especially cautious during the fuel transfer. Another aircraft is more capable than the KC-135, which dates from the 1950s. The KC-46 Pegasus represents the next generation of aerial refueling tankers. Where the boomer was lying prone in a pod at the rear of the aircraft, the KC-46's boomer was sitting at a console called the Aerial Refueling Operator Station. Aeros. The Aeros is situated at the front of the aircraft and uses cameras to provide the boomer with visual cues. For that reason, the simulator for the Aeros is designed to look exactly like the Aeros. The system is more sophisticated than the KC-135, and the boomers have an easier time due to their seated position and the support provided by the new technology. Since the KC-135 still plays a major role in the United States Air Force, pilots must still be trained and know how to react to emergencies. Simulators are used to teach them how to fly the aircraft, but importantly, they can also practice emergency procedures in the simulator. Not only does the simulator enable pilots to learn how to handle emergencies, but it also saves a lot of money. It is estimated that the simulator saves $5,820 per hour of usage. Pilots who are trained in this flight simulator, like the one at MacDill Air Force Base, find it much easier to fly the real KC-135 and they can handle emergencies much easier. One issue that can occur with a KC-135 is fuel fire. To combat the fire, emergency response teams need to train in a realistic scenario, and using a dummy aircraft with generated flames gives them exactly that opportunity. Aircraft fires spread quickly, so emergency response personnel are taught to get to the aircraft as quickly as possible and rapidly attack fires with their water cannons. 
These cannons are used to spray the fire with water or fire retardant, and a bed of foam is laid down to help smother the fuel fire. In other cases, a tanker may crash. Crashes may scatter debris over a wide area, which must be recovered for an investigation. Additionally, they can be as simple as landing gear collapses or runway overshoots. Recovering aircraft is referred to as CDAR, Crash Damaged and Disabled Aircraft Recovery. Personnel trained to perform CDAR are taught how to use inflatable crash bags and cranes and how to use systems designed to debog aircraft. In other words, aircraft stuck in mud or a similar surface. CDAR also includes composite recovery, since certain composites become toxic when they burn. To be ready for a real-life situation, the crew trains on an actual KC-46 Pegasus. In this way, they can respond quicker and know what to do when an aircraft does crash. To improve their readiness to manage crises during unforeseen situations, KC-135 boom operators need comprehensive survival training. One aspect of survival training includes survival at sea. They must survive until helicopters like the MH-65D Dolphin of the U.S. Coast Guard can save them. Derived from the Boeing 707, the KC-135 features the same cargo area, blending commercial design with military purpose. Pilots are too busy with other tasks to load and unload cargo, so the boomers are also loadmasters. Loadmasters in the U.S. Air Force are expected to handle cargo and personnel flying with the aircraft. Cargo must be loaded correctly and secured, and it must align with the center of gravity of the KC-135. Boomers, therefore, undergo loadmaster training. There is a fun side to all these responsibilities. The KC-135 has an onboard galley so the crew can prepare meals for long flights. All it takes is an industrious boomer or spare crew member to go into the kitchenette and whip up some delicious pepperoni pizzas. Basic conveniences like a microwave, coffee maker, and tiny refrigerator abound in the galley. It's not ideal for large meals, but it works for these types of dishes. For over six decades, the KC-135 Stratotanker has served as the lifeline of global U.S. Air Force operations. From Cold War deterrence to modern-day global reach, this aircraft has proven itself as more than just a refueling platform. is a symbol of endurance, adaptability, and strategic power projection. Many KC-135s flying today were built in the late 1915 and early 1960s. Thanks to continuous upgrades, modern avionics, and new engines, the aircraft is expected to remain in service until at least 2040. 
making it one of the longest serving aircraft in military history. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.